Welcome everybody. We are going to start in just a couple minutes. In the meantime, go ahead and put your name and where you're calling in from in the chat. Looks like we have some more folks coming in. Thanks for joining everybody. We are going to start in just a moment. Please go ahead and put your name and where you're calling from in the chat. Hey, Dave from Perryville. We have Pauline from Florida. We have a Canadian, a Mexican. Love it. Great to see. Welcome, everybody. We'll give it just a little bit longer before we kick this off. Saudi Arabia, welcome. Nashville, Tennessee, very fun. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump on in. Thank you guys so much for joining today. I am really excited about this webinar inside the Open Space Lab, uh, where we're going to be highlighting a lot of our recent product releases, as well as um, tell you guys more about our upcoming product roadmap. Um, one housekeeping item is we are recording this uh, webinar and we will be sharing the registration link with you guys uh, via email tomorrow. And to go over what we are going to be covering today, we're going to start with some introductions, and then you'll hear a little bit more about our community and our community challenge. Then we're going to dive into product. We're going to spend the, the last half, so the last 30 minutes of this webinar, opening it up to a Q&A session. So any questions you have, big or small, please put in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we are going to do our best to address those questions in the second half. The last minute or two will um, cover how you guys can submit any product requests and or feedback that you have through our community page as well. Um, and then we will wrap up. So introductions, I will start. I am Claire Aldridge. I am based in San Francisco and I am a part of the customer success team here at Open Space. I, uh, prior to coming over to the tech side, I was on the construction side. I was working for a general contractor uh, before I got the interest to, to hop over to the tech side of things. Um, the combination of those two really helps um, helps ensure that our customers that I work with day to day are, are getting the most value out of their open space investment. Um, really excited to be here with you all and thanks again for joining. And Nakia. Hi everyone, I'm Nakia Chrysostomo and I'm the community manager here at Open Space. Um, prior to joining Open Space, I also was in the construction industry. I worked for both a GC and a CM firm before I moved over to open space um, on the tech innovation side of things. But in doing so, I wanted to make sure I still kept my favorite part of working in construction, which was working with all the people. And so it's been great meeting and getting to know a lot of you through our community. And for those who may not be part of the community yet, just stick around and we have a few opportunities for you to start participating. Michaela? Yeah, thanks, Nakia. My name is Michaela Ryle. I'm an associate product manager here at Open Space. I work on our ClearSight products as well as some of our core products, and I'm really looking forward to sharing our Q1 2022 roadmap with you all today. And I'll pass to Jess. Thanks, Miguel. Hey, everyone. Jess Slam here, Director of Product. Um, work on a number of things here at Open Space. Uh, hello again to those of you who I've met, and uh, welcome to everyone who's new.
All right, Nakia, take it away. Hey, so we'll start our first webinar Wednesday of 2022 with our community challenge. And this challenge is open to everyone here um, live for this webinar and also those who may be watching the recording if you can't make it live. And this challenge will continue through, um, it's open until this Friday, February 11th, 11.59 um, p.m. Pacific. And it's all based on this post in the community that Michaela published this morning. And we have the link here, but um, Michaela will walk through it. And yeah, Claire just drops it in the chat. This is the direct link to it. And for those watching the recording, we will make sure to have the link in the follow-up email. And so on this post that Michaela has, we have two prompts and two ways for you to win prizes. First, free brainstorming lunch with our product team. So all you have to do is leave a comment on the post answering this question. What problem are you facing on your site or sites today that you think open space could help solve and why? And we know it's a very open-ended question, but be creative with it. Um, by the deadline, our product team will look through all of your responses and they will pick out their favorite ideas, the ones that they find most interesting, and invite the community members who posted those ideas to a free lunch. And it'll just be the winners and our product team just brainstorming, diving deeper into your ideas, um, just to see how much more open space can innovate and really make an impact in the construction industry. Second way to win is be entered into a raffle to win this $150 gift card. All you have to do is fill out the survey. The survey link is um, in the community post. And it's a two question survey that's really just a one question survey because the second question is asking for your email and name so we can make sure to enter you into the raffle. So super quick and we will contact the winner and we will actually give you a selection of different $150 gift cards just to make sure you pick one that you can actually use and you really want. Um, so I urge you to register, um, be part of the community. That's a prerequisite in order to be eligible and um, participate in either of these if you are interested in the prizes. Um, feel free to also use Michaela's post um, to keep connecting with each other. So if you see some attendees here that you want to include in your network, um, keep talking to. If you want to keep talking to our team, feel free to comment in Michaela's post um, with that as well. So we can't wait to see more of you in our community moving forward. And without further ado, I'll pass it off to Michaela for our main presentation. Awesome, thanks so much, Nakia. I'm excited to share with you what we have in store for Q1 2022. But first we wanted to start off with a quick recap of some of the features and products that we released in 2021. And I just wanted to remind everybody that we are saving a lot of time for questions at the end. So if questions come up over the course of this presentation, you can drop them in the Q&A section and then we'll take time to answer them at the end. So a little bit about what we did in 2021. And these are just a few things that our customers were really excited about. We're kind of constantly working on improvements and we have daily releases, but we wanted to share some highlights. So starting with Open Space Basic, this is the first free 360 degree video capture product that is available on the market. And really the goal with Open Space Basic was to make it as easy and accessible as possible for teams to try out open space for the first time. And really what we heard from customers, people who now use and love open space on every single project was that getting buy-in for open space usage from leadership or from all the members of the project team is really much simpler once people have had a chance to use open space. So, you know, with this in mind, we said, okay, how can we make it as easy as possible for you all to try open space for the first time? And so insert open space basic. Now you can try open space for free. So what does that mean for you today? If you know, you're a VDC manager and you know a project that would really benefit from using open space currently, but maybe they don't have the budget. Um, you could send them the link that you're seeing on the screen right here and they can self-serve and they could start capturing today. Uh, similarly, you know, if you're a super and you have trade partners who you think could be interested, share this link and, and everybody can try open space. So moving on, I'm sorry little skip there. Um, we also did a lot of improvements to our field notes. And so we know that these have been used for so many workflows since 
we released them. And one of the things that we noticed was a common theme was that often field notes were used for resolving issues. So in that we wanted to really build in additional tools that could help you collaborate and solve and you know, get these issues resolved faster. So to do that, last year we released field note markups, attachments, comments, and due dates. And so the commenting really allows you to discuss the issues in the context of the field note. And then what's really powerful about this is that you'll have a history of everything that was discussed. So, you know, if there's questions in the future about how something was resolved, you can always go back and look and say, okay, here's what happened with that issue, all the context in, in the specific area that this issue occurred. Additionally, once a timeline is agreed to and potentially you say we want this resolved by the state, you can also set deadlines. So we have a due date feature. And then if there's any additional information that's required to resolve issues, you can add attachments to the field note um, with supporting documentation. And then my personal favorite improvement that we made to field notes was the markup tool. So you can see that on the screen here. And really what this is valuable for is especially in busy captures. So, you know, electrical room, or if you're looking up at a bunch of MEPs and you want to call out a specific pipe, what you can do is use this annotation tool to get really specific about where you've noticed an issue or something that you want to call out. And it just kind of eliminates more back and forth and allows you to move forward with finding a solution. In 2021, we also released our 3D scans beta, which is open for everybody to join. So if you haven't done any 3D scanning yet and you wanna uh, try out this, this new product, you absolutely can just contact your customer success representative. And essentially 3D scans are the fastest way that you can get measurable three-dimensional scans in the construction industry. So what we're using it is we're utilizing the latest iPhones and iPads and we're using the LiDAR sensors that they have. And so you take a scan and then what you're able to do is take measurements on that scan. So even today with our you know, early beta customers who've adopted this and started using it, hearing them using it for QAQC or checking measurements for as-built documentation. So kind of anything that you may need measurements for, currently we're reporting two inch accuracy. So kind of lots of opportunities there. Also last year, we integrated with Rico's Z1 camera. And we've, we've known always that image quality is a top priority for all of you. And with Rico's camera, they have a sensor that's three times larger than any other cameras in that category. And so really you can see here how the Z1 often performs way better in low light situations where you still have a lot of image crispness. Again, if that's something that you're interested in, you can reach out to your um, customer success representative, support, or um, you know, your sales team. Additionally, in 2021, we wanted to invest in the product to make it easier for you to add users, search for users, and manage your teams on open space. So this was typical, really a uh, product design for organizational admins who are managing multiple projects on open space. Um, and the idea was that we wanted to make it as frictionless as possible for you to add multiple users. And last but not least, I would talk about ClearSight progress tracking, which we released in April of last year. So with ClearSight, you can automatically track quantity installed and percent complete for different materials on your job site. And at the beginning of 2021, when we released ClearSight, our goal was to automatically track key milestones along the critical path. And for anybody on the call who hasn't yet tried ClearSight, the way that this works is it's really similar to the core product in that you do the capture process the same way. So you're still gonna walk the site, um, but what we'll do is we'll take those captures, we'll run that through a computer vision engine, and then we're able to detect which materials have been installed and automatically tell you how your job is progressing. So we started with walls in April, and since then we've added ceilings, mechanical tracking, electrical tracking, and concrete. 
And we are working on more improvements and trackers for ClearSight in Q1 2022, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But you know, really what we're seeing so far with ClearSight is that you know, customers who are using ClearSight like Gilbane, Suffolk, Bolt, are using it to really supplement their current tracking methods with objective data. And then other teams who might be facing manpower constraints are using ClearSight to really stay ahead of potentially costly impacts to schedule. And really across the board, what we've heard from clients is that by focusing on objective data, they're really allowed to kind of get away from disagreement, he said, she said, and then focus on problem solving, which is ultimately saving them lots of time. Um, I will say if this is interesting to you, we'll talk a little bit more later, kind of what we have in the pipeline, but also next webinar Wednesday. So next month, we're going to have one specifically on ClearSight. So if you want to deep dive, uh, be sure to join the next webinar. And now I'm sure the moment you have all been waiting for, we're going to talk about what we're doing in Q1. And a lot of this work has already started, so pretty excited to share it all with you. So Q1 2022, things we're focusing on is increased visibility for admins. We want to expand what we're tracking with ClearSight. We're incorporating your schedule insights. We have a punch list integration as well as plan grid, all of which we'll go a little bit more deeper on in the next couple of minutes. So starting with what the ClearSight team is up to this quarter, so I know we talked about a little bit how our goal was to really deliver end-to-end -end tracking. So we wanted you to be able to track your progress from start all the way through finishes. And in order to reach that goal, we really needed to build more trackers in Q1. So we're adding doors, floors, overhead mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, as well as fire protection, uh, all of which I'm very excited about. Um, I'm specifically excited about overhead MEP. We've been partnering closely with a lot of you to really understand what you're looking for from an overhead MEP tracker. And really what we've heard there is that these systems are so complicated to install that being able to provide this progress information could really open up and allow for additional bandwidth for your teams to focus on other things like coordination and scheduling. Um, additionally, we're really excited to announce that we will be integrating with your schedule. So since the very first beta customers who were on ClearSight back in April, all the way through sales calls that we were having this week, we have had requests to bring schedule information from your systems into ClearSight. And we're excited to say that we're focusing on that this quarter. So with this addition of the scheduling insights, you're going to have access to the schedule in, in open space. And so what this really means is that anybody who's a ClearSight user can easily see how the job is progressing against the plan. We'll be pulling in schedule start dates and end dates. And the idea is that with this increased transparency, again, kind of like we talked about earlier, you can really focus on, you know, oh, if we are experiencing a delay, how can we get the progress project back on track rather than kind of um, needing to investigate that further. So going on, we also are focused on faster turnaround processing times this quarter, which is something that we're constantly investing in, really just to continue to be the fastest automated tracking solution available on the market. We also have some exciting things coming related to executive reporting. So executive reports are really designed for organizational admins who are managing five or more projects in their portfolio. And what we heard from these people and our customers really who are managing all of these projects was that they wanted more visibility into how their teams are utilizing the open space investment. So with this reporting, we wanted to make it possible for you to quickly determine who's capturing, which projects are capturing, which people are capturing, which projects are using field notes so that you can feel more comfortable and you're not running into any blind spots or surprises. 
So what we're delivering with this executive reporting is four unique reports. You'll have project reporting, capture reporting, and field net reporting, as well as activity on your team members. And so with projects, you can really compare capture activity across projects. For example, one of the things that we hear pretty frequently from our, our GC clients is that sometimes during the summer, they'll bring on interns and those interns will take on the capturing responsibility. And then come August when the interns go back to school, maybe there's a lag between when the intern doesn't have that responsibility anymore and somebody else picks up. So with this executive dashboard, you'd be able to very quickly identify when projects are not capturing as frequently as they previously were. And you could call up the project manager on that project and you know make sure that somebody has really taken on that responsibility. Similarly, if you wanted more information around captures and who's capturing and the duration of capturing, that's gonna be available in the capture report. So you'll be able to see total capture minutes, the capturer, and um, you can just have more oversight about really what is happening across your organization. We also have a field note report, which I think is especially interesting and powerful because it really allows you to spot trends in the issues that might be popping up across your whole portfolio. So for example, if you're noticing safety or housekeeping items across your organization, you can discuss those and figure out how to prevent those things in the future. Um, and then finally, uh, your team activity. One of the things that we had heard from leaders at our partners was that they really want to understand who's using open space. So yes, it's important to capture. Yes, it's important to take field notes, but are, are our team members actually you know, logging in and taking full advantage of that data? And so with this team activities page, you'll really be able to see who's reviewing those projects. Now I'll talk a little bit about what our integrations team is working on this quarter. So, you know, generally at open space, one of the top like frustrations that we hear from our customers about construction tech in general is really around data silos. And so we understand that you want to be able to pull open space data into multiple systems so that it works with the other tools that you've already invested in. And so our Procore integration, which is one of our most popular integrations today, you're able to push field notes to RFIs and observations, but we're expanding this integration so that now you'll also be able to push field notes to punch list items. And the hope with this is that this enhancement will really help project teams kind of get through that last 5% of the projects and deliver projects on time. And then in a similar vein, we are also building plan grid integration this quarter. So we know that for a lot of you, plan grid is your construction management tool and that it's really important to be able to push field notes to RFIs and tasks. Um, and so this way you're really able to manage these issues in all of the systems that you're using on your projects. And then finally, we're going to be investing in an improved experience for our users in the field. So a little bit of background on what this means. Essentially, we're going to be enhancing our mobile capture experience. And there's a, a couple of reasons for that. I think, you know, first, when we first started, open space captures were closer to three minutes each. I'm sure that if any of you are capturing, you know that captures are no longer on average three minutes each, and we would never want to limit capture length. So captures have gotten longer, and as our users have in found increasing value from open space, we want to make sure that we can support really efficient upload of those captures. Additionally, when we first started open space, it was predominantly VDC managers who were the main team members who were going out, taking captures, maybe coming back to the office, uploading those captures, and then viewing those captures on a, on a desktop or a laptop. But today we know that open space is being used by everybody on the team, project engineers, superintendents, uh, architects, and a lot of these clients are really based in the field. And so because of that, we wanted to make sure that we have a great 
capture navigation tool for you to be using as a field user. So how are we going to be improving this experience? We are gonna be adding in increased visibility and upload management tools. There'll be increased or new capture navigation for mobile, as well as pause and resume capabilities for your capture uploads. And then finally, if you are uploading a capture from the field, we wanna make sure that you can continue all of the other work that you're doing. So if you need to answer a text, if you need to go check another tool, or uh, if you need to leave the open space app, we wanna make sure that your captures continue to upload in the background as you're doing all of that. So I'm really excited about what we're delivering in Q1. And with that, I think we can jump into q and I think I see some questions have been coming in. So let me, let me take a look at those. And kind of through the Q&A, if there's more questions that you all have, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. So, so Michaela, let's go ahead and start with Bryce's um, okay. first question. Can you explain further the integration of schedule into ClearSight? Can you pull directly from MS project or can it be, or can it pull from project scheduling? Yeah, thanks Bryce, this is a great question. So the first version of the ClearSight schedule integration is gonna allow you to upload the current schedule using a CSV template. And from there, we're evaluating technology integrations with other tools like MS Project so that you could pull in your dates automatically. Awesome, thanks Michaela. And then the next one, um, Sylvie has a question. Can you measure progress of concrete installation for slab using volume of concrete poured? Yeah, no, thank you. That's a great question. So today, ClearSight can track the progress of concrete pours for slabs, footings, columns, and walls. And the slabs themselves are quantified in a square foot and percent complete. So, but in the future, it's something we would want to explore the pour volume based on your models. Great, thank you. And then uh, we had one from Racha. When you mentioned a new product is to add the punch list, you meant as an observation and to be linked to the Procore punch list tool, correct? Um, yeah, that's right. So you'll be able to create and link an open space field note to an existing Procore punch list. So your field notes will now be able to power your Procore punch list, exactly. Then we have one from Bobby. Are any of these features automatically pushed out to our dashboard? Any of these new features? Yes. So 3D scans, the plan get integration, Procore punch list, mobile improvements will all be available to everybody upon release. The new clear site trackers will be available to any project that has purchased future trackers with their clear site package. Um, and the schedule integration will be available to all ClearSight customers. Awesome. And then um, we have another great question. I'm going to test out the 3D scans in a few projects next week. Do you have any how-to guides or documentation about it? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Great question. There is, there's tutorial videos in the mobile application that you'll actually see after you select the 3D scanning option. And then we'll be posting additional support documentation in the coming weeks. Good question and answer. And then the next is, is the plan grid integration the same as Autodesk build? Not yet. The plan grid integration will only connect your projects that are on a plan grid subscription. So we'll have a separate integration for Autodesk build projects in the future. Great, and then another one from Bryce. For the executive reporting, can you view how many people from outside your organization, clients, subtrades, professionals are using the captures or can you only see people inside your organization? Um, so this is a great idea. It's something that we, it's a, it's a really common request that we've been getting really our clients wanting to understand 
how people who they're partnered with are also utilizing the open space investment. With this first version of executive reporting, you'll only be able to see people within your organization, but as we evolve the reporting product and other admin tools, we would definitely consider this. And uh, that's something I'd love to talk with you about more. Great, and then from Alexis, will there be a summary email sent out? Um, I can go ahead and answer that. We will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow to all registrants with a recording of this call. Um, and we'll also be sharing the slide deck that we went through today with you guys. And Lisa, will there be separate trackers for items within the concrete pour, like rebar and embeds? Yeah, in the future, yes. Today we're tracking the pores themselves. So concrete slabs, walls, columns, as well as footings. Great, and then Edward, how heavy of an overhaul is the mobile capturing user interface going to be? Will it be something that we would need to get our training department involved in to retrain our field employees? Yeah, no, nobody familiar with capturing on open space should need to be retrained on how to capture. Uh, if anything, these improvements should make it easier for first time capturers to go through that process. And then another one from Sylvie, which trackers are ready for transfer to industrial construction? For example, piles steel. So we're exploring the possibility of tracking materials in the industrial uh, construction space with some customers. And so we have some projects in the work for later this year that could have a bigger impact for power and energy. Great. And then from Bobby, when do you anticipate plan grid integration to be released? It's expected. I can, oh. <laughs> I can jump in too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the plan grid integration um, beta will be starting in the next few weeks. So if you're interested in participating, participating in the beta, um, please notify your customer success manager, um, or you can also email info at openspace.ai um, and we can get you looped in. We'll be running the beta um, probably for six to eight weeks as we continue to add some new functionality to the integration. So you can be one of the first to test it out. Uh, yeah, sorry to jump Great. in. <laughs> um, Thanks, Jess. I think we have one more. Um, for Mihai, do you plan to use image search for HSE? For example, if you have a report for how many workers did it have helmets during a time frame, day, week, month? Yeah, I can also take this one. Um, hi, Mihai. Uh, so if you didn't hear, um, well, we've really slowed down the work on uh, the, the feature known as image search or object search. Um, to focus our efforts on ClearSight and adding more tracking, integrating with your schedule dates, um, improving the speed of that, those processing times. Um, that technology has not completely gone away from open space. It's something we're evaluating to bring back in. Um, for those that don't know, it's the ability to basically draw a bounding box on a 360 image, and then uh, our computer vision model will go find that object, all the other images. Um, so we're not actively working on that specific feature today and uh, you know that could be a use case you know we've one of the challenges with the the kind of uh, PPE use case or protective gear uh, monitoring on the job site is that you really have to be capturing every, the entire day and everyone to really have the kind of thoroughness and coverage you need um, certainly open space can help a lot and supplement with that um, in fact, we actually have a number of customers using open space today with field notes who are kind of going through and manually tagging. And, you know, as you can imagine, working closely with them, we could eventually, you know, potentially build out a computer vision model based on that training data. So 
very long answer. Uh, we're not working on that today, but it's definitely something we have our eyes on in the future. Thanks, Jess. We just had one more come in from Chandler. Is the material tracking able to distinguish between existing and new work? For example, if demolition and improvements are being done within an existing facility. Yeah, I can also take this one. Uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Chandler. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of, you know, the computer vision model is, uh, you would say maybe is in its like junior high year of school. It's, uh, it can tell you if there's top track there or there's framing or there's drywall or if it's been taped or hung, but it won't tell you, it won't be able to tell you if that happened before, you know, today. Um, and, and it, or if it's going to be demolished later. Um, that is something we've been talking with some customers about though, is how to almost do reverse progress tracking, uh, if you can imagine it. So where we would take demolition plans, and kind of track progress of getting all the materials off the site and then you know starting new whenever uh, demolition is done and you're ready to start the new work. Um, but yeah, short answer, we don't, we don't distinguish between new and existing today. So the way that we get around that is we work with customers to make sure that we start, we turn on the tracking once the demolition is done, unless you don't mind having those walls tracked, which uh, there are a few projects where this hasn't really been an issue. Awesome, thanks Jess. Any other questions you guys have, please throw it in the q a box looks like we just got another one from racha are you great question are you thinking of adding to the trackers the checklist tools of procore um that is a good question i think is the uh well i'll, I'll make an assumption and racha tell me if i'm wrong with the checklist tool Procore, that's when you're doing inspections and it's just kind of repeated, you know, from project to project or floor to floor, you're kind of checking the same things. Cool. Um, that is a very clever idea. <laughs> I like it. Um, so that we haven't been considering that because right now with Clearsight, we're, we're trying to get enough coverage across the, the full life cycle or scope of a project that we can really deliver on you know, project percent complete. But now that we have this kind of core um, computer vision technology, there are a lot of different um, problems we could tackle. I think that's a great one. We haven't really been talking about using it for inspections, but if you haven't already, please throw that or add that idea to the community because our team is checking that all the time. Um, and this is actually the first time I've heard that specific idea, I think. Thank you. And uh, just in from Evan. Hi, Evan. Good to see, good to see you. Uh, what is the accuracy of the 3D scanning and can it be split screen with the BIM model? More good questions. Um, <laughs> so we're seeing pretty consistently uh, sub two inch accuracy. Um, it, it depends a little bit on, well, it depends a lot on how many points are captured when you do um, the 3D scan. So if you kind of move slowly and you leave the camera on a certain area for a longer period of time, you're gonna get more points. And so you know, if you're in an electrical room and you really capture thoroughly, the accuracy is gonna be a lot higher than if you're kind of walking along a corridor and just kind of capturing a sparse point cloud. Uh, and so if you do capture you know, a lot of points and it's a dense point cloud, you're gonna get you know, sub one inch, sub half inch accuracy. Um, and then the second part of your question, uh, can it be uh, split screen with the BIM model? It technically can and will be uh, one day, but with the, the first version of 3D scans that will be coming out, it won't be split screen with the BIM model yet, but it will, there will be a split screen view where you'll have the, um, the point cloud that has the uh, textured mesh overlaid on top of it. And then when you click on different points, we'll pull up those 
uh, high resolution images that are captured with your mobile device. And then you'll be able to do measurements uh, on either in either 2D on the photo or in 3D on the textured mesh. All good questions. Thanks, Jess. Uh, one in from Edward. How much notice will we have before the mobile app update, mobile update goes live? And where would be the best place to track that timeline? We <laughs> that's a good question. Um, we don't currently have uh, a place where we kind of give updates on these projects as they're in flight. Most of them are going to be coming out at the end of the first quarter, which for us is um, end of April. So the earliest it would be out be end of April, um, but it, it could be even pushed to May, just depending on some of the technical complexities we run into. Um, I'm not 100% not sure why you asked. I think it, it is a good idea for us um, to keep you updated. So Nakia, let's uh, get together after this and talk about how we can help better update uh, the community on these projects. And so we can post updates inside the community for you all to know when things are coming out, when there are betas you can join, um, as well as you know, once we get closer to the release, any training materials that are available to your teams. Uh, one thing I will add there, I know is asked above, the, the changes to the mobile app, you know, that will, will provide support materials and you can always schedule a call with your customer success manager. Um, and we can even go through it on a webinar, but the, they won't be big sweeping changes that make it a whole new product experience to learn. Um, they, it will actually just be adding um, some functionality you all are already used to from the web application, which is that capture list. So just being able to navigate using the capture list, but it'll have a little more functionality for you to pause and resume your uploads and give you more visibility into what actually happens after you upload a video so that you know exactly where your video is at and have a better sense of when it will be available for your team to view. Great. And Evan asked, would it be better to use the Rico camera? Um, I, <laughs> it depends. Oh, for it, the scanning, he just clarified. Just, got it. Thank you, Evan. I was wondering, I was going to make an assumption, but um, it, it, the key difference, I guess, with the Rico camera and the, the mobile devices we're, we're um, implementing the software on is the, the LiDAR sensor. And that really, helps um, with, with the ability to, to capture that depth data much more accurately. Uh, however, I mean, the downside uh, is that, you know, you have to point it in three in 360 degrees if you want to capture that full 360 view, whereas the 360 cameras like the Ricoh can better pick that up much more efficiently. But we've heard whispers that there are going to be some 360 cameras with LiDAR. Um, and so when that happens, as you know, we jump right on the new cameras when they come out. So uh, then we already have all this kind of underlying functionality and, or an infrastructure built out for 3D scans. Then we'll be able to more seamlessly integrate these cameras. Um, yeah, good question. And uh, Shane, are there any plans for a web service or API call to provide usage data for organizational admins? Does Shane work here? Is he looking at our roadmaps? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Shane. Um, so yeah, you, you're, you're kind of hitting the nail on the head. Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, the reason that we led with, with um, executive reporting and giving you all that data within the product is because not every team has a, well, not every one of our customers' companies has a development team. Not everyone knows what an API is. And so we just wanted to get that data into the hands of as many customers as possible to start. Um, but then for those customers who do want to pull that data out on a recurring basis and get it into the systems 
that they're already using, uh, we will be shipping or releasing uh, our first set of APIs this year. Awesome. And Kyle, honor, good to see you too. Are you working on the ability to view the BIM in the field on the mobile app, preferably offline? Um, yes, so good question. Um, we are, uh, there's, <laughs> so we have a, at Open Space, we have a research and development team that is, uh, we also call it our AI team. So they're working on kind of these bigger, more complex projects that are more like a year out um, from the, some of the things that the product team and I are working on with, or with what we call our kind of production engineering team, um, just to give you more context than you probably wanted. And so that the R&D team, they're working on, uh, on ways to bring them to the field, uh, just as you described, and really open up that access or give the access to that data that's in the BIM model to much more of your team. Um, and so, well, I don't have an exact timeline for you yet. I'm, I feel pretty good. It will be in the next four-ish, five months that we'll have something available, um, maybe sooner to test out. So if you're interested, you know, drop us a note in the community or, or throw this idea under the product ideas um, group on community and, you know, we'll, we'll get the right product people looped in with you. Um, the only, the, yeah, the one thing I wanted to add to that is one of the really exciting things that we've seen with the BIM compare tool is the adoption of um, BIM by a lot of customers and, and their team members who weren't using BIM before, because now you don't need a, you don't need Revit or Navisworks or, you know, even a certification to be able to navigate the BIM all. You can mute, actually navigate BIM using 360 images, using sheets, things that are very familiar. And so we're really excited to get them into the field as well. Great, thank you. Any other questions, please throw them in and we will, we have a few more minutes to answer. Maybe we, we just did such a good job of explaining everything. <laughs> and I think there's a new one in the Q&A box, Claire. Oh, here's one from Brian. Thanks, Brian. Can the 3D BIM model be used to indicate route start and stops instead of 2D sheets? That, uh, that is a great question. Um, yes, technically that would be possible. We. We haven't explored that yet. Um, I'm, hmm. I guess, Brian, it, you can maybe reply in the chat. Are you asking because you want to be able to start and stop your route or in the mobile app when you're capturing, or you just want to see the, the route uh, with kind of overlaid within the BIM model? It's going to see that path. I'm going to guess it's actually that the, the second one. And so we're definitely investing a lot more in BIM this year. And so a deeper integration between both the 360 images and the BIM, as well as the sheet um, are all on our roadmap. And so that, I feel like that will actually address the, the question you're asking. So that should be possible later this year. Awesome. And from Umberto, do you have on the roadmap uh, to, the ability to do photo field notes with the mobile, but in a passive way. Yes, let me just make sure I understand. So yeah, so Umberto, I believe what you're asking is, um, without a 360 camera, just taking your mobile phone, could you walk along and um, just kind of automatically take photo field notes to almost create a passive capture? And so it sounds like you're on our R&D team because <laughs> uh, that's something we've been talking about and exploring. Um, so yeah, not it's not uh, scheduled on the roadmap quite yet because we're, you know, <laughs> we're it's a, for us, things change really quickly. And so 
for us to plan out 18 months is quite challenging. We're, we can do a pretty good job with the next three months. Um, but, you know, depending on feedback we get from you all in the community and, you know, some of our own experimentation with technologies like passive capture with mobile devices, you know, that really will determine when some of these new features or products might come out this year. Um, so not officially on the roadmap, but in the open space labs <laughs> universe of experimentation. And from Thomas Strong, great question. Where are you seeing the most growth with your customer base amongst developers and owners or amongst GCs in trades or other? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't want to speak too much for the sales team who may be on the call. <laughs> um, so when, when Open Space first started, you know, those first customers, the early adopters, a lot of them were, were general contractors. In fact, a lot of them were VDC managers. Um, but over the last, uh, I would say, 18 months, we've seen really high growth from the, the developers and owners, as well as the trades, while GCs are continuing to grow. So it's more kind of a mix of the customer base. I would say it has, has changed a lot over the last 18 months, but all are, are growing rapidly, thankfully. And uh, they're also growing um, you know, globally. So we have teams in you know, China, Japan, Australia, Singapore, the UK, the rest of the EU, as well as the Middle East. And so we're also seeing a lot of growth in those areas as well. And from Lisa, can you do voice to text for field notes? Yes, you can. Um, so the way that it works is when you're doing, you're, you're writing a description in a field note, um, when that keyboard is up on your phone, you can actually hit the microphone button and record uh, a message that's then transcribed into the description. Um, so it's possible today. Um, it's not, I would, I would say that it, it will work as well as your mobile devices operating system handles voice to text transcription. Um, in the future, we may look into that sort of technology um, to kind of build ourselves or, or to partner with someone who's, who's doing it well. But in fact, it, and that's a great question. That's something that we, we often do when we visit customers, um, when we're on the job site with them, you know, because we're taking lots of notes, doing lots of field notes, um, we'll do a lot of voice to text. And we have another one in, is it possible to associate actual location coordinates into the capture? It would potentially, um, it, I mean, technically possible, yes, if you're talking about um, like coordinate system points uh, or like, like an actual GPS location. Um, it is technically feasible. Uh, I think early on with the product, you know, we experimented with that and it's a bit tricky just depending on the type of project. And so it can kind of, the, those numbers of that data can be a bit misleading. Um, that said, uh, we are exploring and, and starting to talk to some customers about um, pulling in, uh, pulling in, rooms and regions and areas data um, so that it's much easier and faster to navigate through your captures and through your sheets. Um, so no, not exactly the, the exact same thing, but it is built around that, uh, that location. And I'm, I'm probably guessing that you're wanting to know because you want to pull, um, pull these captures and maybe into like a GIS tool. And so we're not there today, um, unfortunately for that one. All right, we're close to time. We have three more questions um, that we will. Oh. Go ahead, yeah. Jess. We might, maybe we have time for one more. One more? Yeah. OK, let's see. Um, from Umberto, yeah. do you have in the roadmap to export the field notes with CSV files, maybe the photos exported with the URL address? 
we we don't explicitly have that feature on the roadmap, but we do have plans to um, overhaul field notes to make them a lot easier to use uh, and also add some other data to them um, and allow you to add more data to them. So they're actually a, a little richer, um, but that is a good idea. I mean, one of the things we'll explore in that project is what do you want to do with field notes outside of open space? And so that'd be a great idea to at least get into the community and then um, we can start digging in to, to better understand how you what you'd want to be doing with that data and how we could um, make it easy to, to generate those exports for you. And uh, yeah, the, I, since we're about out of time, Claire, what I would just add to, to everyone on the call or the recording, these are awesome questions. We love them. Also, it gives us not only ideas, but it gives us a signal as to what's important to you and helps us prioritize the work we're planning to do. Um, so if we didn't get to your question today, you know, drop it into the community. Someone from our team will, will follow up. And if they don't know the answer, they'll pull in the right person. Um, and if you, as always, if you have product ideas, please add them to the community or even better search for that idea you have. And if you find someone else's, post it, drop a comment in there saying that you want to, um, you want the, that feature as well. Um, so yeah. Thanks everyone. I'll hand it back to you now, Claire. Awesome. Thank you. And Michaela, if you just want to wrap it up, will you go ahead and show, show the folks where they can put those requests and feedbacks in? Yeah. So what Jess was just referring to, you can put this into the product ideas group on our open space community. So you can access the community from this URL that's linked right here. And then once you get to the community, you can navigate to groups and then product ideas. And then here you can uh, create any topics with ideas that you have for the product. And more immediately, just a reminder about the, the raffle that we have going on right now. If you have specific problems that you would like open space to think about solving, please add those to to the uh, raffle that I posted this morning. And I think with that, thank you all for joining today. Thank you guys. I really appreciate your, your time and hopefully you learned a thing or two. And we'll see you in the community platform. All right, take care guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.